Womack Trauma Center designation. Today's simple ceremony celebrates an important achievement that few healthcare organizations in our nation pursue or realize. Verification by the American College of Surgeons Committee on trauma and designation by the state of North Carolina as a level three trauma center. And we are so honored to have the Transitional Intermediate Management Organization, also known as TIMO, and Director of the National Capital Region Medical Director, Brigadier General Anita Fliggy, Deputy Assistant Director, Education and Training, Defense Health Agency, Senior Enlisted Advisor, Education and Training, and Mr. Joey Nelson, representing SIN Community. Thank you for taking the time to join us. At this time, I invite you to stand. General Carrilla, 18th Airborne Corps Commanding General and Fort Bragg Senior Commander, and Brigadier General Wyack, the Director for Transitional Intermediate Management. My name is John Melton, and I have the privilege of serving as your Womack Army Medical Center Commander. The Army Medical Center has been verified by the American College of Surgeons and designated by the great state of North Carolina as a trauma center level three. Yeah. But let there be no doubt, this is simply a waypoint. We will become a level two. That pursuit is supported by both the ACS and the state of North Carolina. Clearly this accomplishment could not have been achieved without the hard work, collaboration, and commitment of so many individuals, their teams, and our partner organizations. We cannot and will not take that for granted. But today, I invite you to appreciate that this celebration represents something even more. The unwavering commitment of our nation and military for those who serve and the families who share in that service on behalf of the American people. And I want to share with you what I believe you should take away from today. Three points. The law, maximizing survivability, and Pathfinder. And you can let me know at the end if it makes sense. First, it's the law. The National Defense Authorization Act 2017 directed the Department of Defense to maintain medical education and training programs with a level one or level two trauma center capability at military medical centers. That's section 703. <clears throat> Establish high performing military civilian integrated health delivery systems. That's section 706. Establish a joint trauma system. Section 707. And authorize the evaluation and treatment of veterans and civilians in military medical centers. That's section 717. All of these authorities in federal law require military medical centers to participate in the United States trauma system, and I quote from the law, to improve combat casualty care in future conflicts. It's the law. Second, maximize survivability. Although it is not surprising that frontline infantry soldiers, Marines, and special forces suffer casualties in higher proportion than the rest of the military. The infantry squad formation represents only 4% of the total uniform force, yet our infantry squads suffered almost 90% of all U.S. military combat deaths since World War II. Today, trauma is the leading cause of death and disability for Americans age 45 and younger. And reports suggest one of five civilian trauma deaths and one of four military trauma deaths could be prevented. And for the most seriously injured patients, life or death is determined by the immediate responders and the EMS system. About half of trauma deaths occur before the patient ever gets to definitive care. At Walmac, our trauma center efforts are nested, nested in bolstering pre-hospital care. 
in partnership with our Fayetteville Technical Community College, we have established an accredited 20-week paramedic program that is satisfying the first responder demand signal from our close combat formations. 18 starts every month, building capabilities, paramedic, flight paramedic, critical care transport, delayed evacuation casualty management, tactical combat casualty tear, and the, and the use of low titer group whole O blood. By, by participating in the trauma system, we are now part of a learning system. And because our EMS is integrated at WAMAC, over time, it enables us to learn and reduce variability in the EMS system from point of injury and transport to definitive care. Not only here at home station, but also on the battlefield. Remember, about half of trauma deaths occur before the patient ever gets to definitive care. We have to maximize survivability. Finally, Pathfinder. The Army medical reform and the military health system transformation represents the most significant change in over 50 years in military medicine. Even with uncertainty and ambiguity, we, WALMAC, along with our many partners, achieved trauma center verification and designated designation and many other things with velocity. It demonstrates to me that we have an opportunity to show one way in creating and sustaining a unified learning trauma system. Our partner command surgeons, I know you're in the room, medical units, garrison headquarters here at Fort Bragg. Our EMS partners in Cumberland, Hoke, Harnett, and Moore counties. Our partners in the Fayetteville VA Medical Center, Cape Fear Valley Medical Center, First Health Moore Regional Hospital, Duke University Hospital, Wake Med, I know you're in the house, <laughs> and UNC Medical Center. What I see are allied and coalition partners with a common purpose to build host nation, state, and county trauma capability right here in Central North Carolina. Since 1966, a series of reports have called attention to the need to complete the nation's trauma system to improve care and save lives. It was in 2004 that the DOD established a joint trauma system the vision of Army Colonel retired John B. Oakham, who many of us know, know well. Ultimately, the civilian and military trauma systems must be part of one unified system. Such a system would not only improve performance, but it would also support national defense and homeland security, serving as a framework for disaster preparedness and response. So North Carolina is the pathfinder for not only the military health system, but for our nation. Now here's the ask. I invite each of you to choose in your role and your responsibility to advocate on behalf of Walmack Army Medical Center to become a level two trauma center for Fort Bragg and North Carolina. We are the home of the Airborne and Special Operations Forces. We are the medical role for, for the Army's flagship power projection platform. And we empower those who fight and win our nation's wars. Even though there is so much change, Sun Tzu reminds us that in the midst of chaos, there is opportunity. And there is tremendous opportunity because it is the law. We must maximize survivability, and we and North Carolina, we are the pathfinder. On behalf of the American people and to achieve the Army of 2028, we can show the way. Congratulations to the team. Be excited for what is yet to come. One team, one purpose, all the way airborne. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome
Um, thank you very much for having the North Carolina Office of EMS here today. Womack Army Medical Center is now part of the North Carolina Trauma System. The North Carolina Trauma System is honored to count Womack Army Medical Center as part of the family. In preparation for this event, I was researching a little bit about Womack Army Medical Center. This led me to read up on Medal of Honor recipient, Private First Class Bryant Homer Womack. Bryant Womack was a truly remarkable individual who we can all learn from. I had not realized that he was from Polk County, North Carolina. I read an article from the Polk County local paper which talked about Womack's life. I think his story illustrate the, illustrates the principles that got how I want our trauma system to function. How he cared for his comrades and how his comrades cared for him really illustrate where I want the North Carolina trauma system to have its priorities. The Arlington local paper has a quotation from Womack's lieutenant, who Womack also treated. When visiting Womack's family, his lieutenant told them, Bryant never fell to the ground. His buddies caught him. He died in his buddy's arms. Even at the end of his life, Womack knew that he was surrounded by people who cared for him. He did not die alone. I want every patient and every patient's family in North Carolina to know that they will be cared for and treated like they were a member of our family. I want every family to know that their loved one will be surrounded by people who care for them and who want to help them. I know that some of us, myself included, from time to time, might feel ground down by the sheer amount of suffering that we see. But we have the privilege of caring for people and their families during the most critical times of their lives. Who else can really say that? How PFC Bryant Homer Womack cared for his brothers and how his brothers then cared for him should be an example of what our entire state trauma system should aspire to. You are now part of the North Carolina trauma system, but you are also now part of the North Carolina trauma family. As members of the United States Army, you already make great sacrifices for our country. In order to become a state designated trauma center, you had to make even more sacrifices. All of your hard work will make a difference. I truly believe that the fusion of military and civilian medicine will save lives and that the entire North Carolina trauma system will benefit from your dedication and service. The North Carolina Office of EMS and the state trauma system will always be at your service. We will learn a lot from each other. The North Carolina trauma system is truly honored to have the United States Army as represented by Womack Army Medical Center and its military and civilian personnel as part of our trauma team. Thank you. I'm Elton on behalf of the North Carolina Office of EMS, we present you your level three trauma center designation to Womack Army Medical Center. Right. <laughs> 